I'm Al Rosenberg. I'm 30 years old from Albany, New York. I work in food service at the Sage Senior Center. Um, I am a trans man. I've been transitioning for almost nine years now. Um, I'm a musician. I love cats. <laughs> <laughs>Um, it's been a mixed bag. It's been good and bad. Um, I've definitely had some good experiences in New York, like a Callan Lord. Um, been primarily good. I had some bad experiences in Boston where I went to college, but that was, I think, earlier in. There's, there's been like a, a shift in the standard of care for trans people in, in healthcare. So before, when I started looking into transitioning, um, you had to meet certain criteria to get to get that kind of treatment. Um, and that was uh, difficult because there, there were like steps that I wasn't ready to take as uh, someone in their late teens and early 20s. But in New York, it's been pretty good because um, there's like a higher, not a higher standard, but um, better, better training and like a, a more broad population, like a higher density of people that need the sort of like similar care that I have need to receive. So, I mean, mostly good. Some bad. So when I started when I started transitioning in Boston, um, I went to my primary care, who told me that I couldn't transition transition before I was uh, living full time as male and before I came out to my family. Both things I it wasn't feasible because I was working and going to college. So I just didn't. It it was unrealistic to to be like living full time in Boston with a part-time job in college and I wasn't ready to come to my parents just for like a bunch of personal reasons. So they said no. And I started anyway. I had like um, did a bunch of shady things and started transitioning on my own. And when I approached my doctor again, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'm doing this thing. What are the what are the steps? And they at that point they threw even more roadblocks and it just took like a number of months and a number of like extra steps to like affirm that I was like mentally competent to make a decision by myself and and that was um that was a negative experience you know also um I've had a, a few run-ins like in the emergency room where my presentation and identification don't match up which is caught you know and if you're in the ER it's never really like so it's like a casual occasion where you have all this extra time to sort of mill about and like discuss politics. It's also usually like three in the morning when their their like B roll is on. So, you know, there's been some things, um, people being rude, people being dismissive, um, sitting for hours and hours when you know, people that come in after you going before you and stuff like that, you know, they sort of decide that well, who knows what happens behind closed doors, I'm not a doctor, but people decide it seems as though they decide, you know, well this person we don't really know what to do with them or how to deal, so they can wait. I've definitely become guarded um, because of my past experiences. When you have, when you're sick or you're in pain, and then you go to a hospital, or doctor's office, and then you deal with an additional hurdle of having to deal with rude people or um, aggressive people or people that are indifferent <clears throat> or openly antagonistic, it, it it makes you reconsider <clears throat> looking for help the next time you encounter a problem, just because it's. This it's extra thing, you know, insult to injury, as it were. But um, definitely, with each negative experience, it informs my decision to seek care the next time something comes up. A lot of the stereotypes people make about me have probably more to do with my appearance than anything else about me. Uh, I think people people often assume that I do uh, heavy drugs and stuff. And when I'm in the ER, the uh, people have have asked me questions akin to that, um, but I think the wrong um, I think one of the the biggest assumptions people make about me when I've gone in for treatment at places that aren't like my um, primary care are like sexual orientation and things like that, which isn't, you know, a huge deal to me, but I, I can see that being like a problem for people, because also I feel that people, um, 
get nervous around doctors, so they don't want to like, if a doctor doesn't ask you a leading question, you don't necessarily want to offer extra information. So you know, like if you go in to like get an STI screening, if someone doesn't ask you if you need a certain thing or if you're like engaged in certain activities, you would necessarily know to offer that information if they're assuming that like, okay, well, if you look like a straight man, then you don't need like these, you know, they don't, does that make sense? They don't ask you like a question you might not know it off the information, you might not get the service that you need. Um, I, well, I think all healthcare workers should have like a basic competency training and like a standard of care. And, um, just for, not just for trans people and uh, gender not conforming people, but for just people in general. Um, like respecting pronouns and like, knowing how to deal with information that isn't maybe um, standard, not standard, but like obvious. If someone walks into a doctor's office and their paperwork says, so like my paperwork would say Alice Rosenberg, that's my legal name, because I haven't changed it. So like if the doctor, if I'm not going to my primary care doctor, if I'm going to like a specialist or um, an offsite location where they don't know me, they call my name and walk in the room, the doctor might be surprised to see me, um, but like, it, the doctor should know, or the nurse should know, to like not register that surprise, and to not maybe then ask a bunch of inappropriate questions, or like leading questions, just, you know, take it on face value, because like, you know, once you look at the paperwork, you figure it out, or you should be able to, I would think, especially in New York, or like other large cities where there is a population. There should be, I think healthcare should like encompass like wellness for everyone. So like, you know, if a woman needs to get a prostate exam, there shouldn't be this like whole then like six months of red tape being like, well, why does she have a prostate? You know, it's sort of like, well, I need to go to the gynecologist. I shouldn't have to then get on the phone with someone, especially considering that like my identification shouldn't put up a red flag, but then like you, you go to a doctor's office and they say, well, why do you need this? And it's like, can't, you know, you're, shouldn't you be able to figure that out too, you know? So, just like, maybe an, an easier road to get, to get insurance companies to cover the, the things that, that aren't even, it's not even like the next steps up, it's not like, you know, a surgery or something that's insanely expensive, just like, you know, a routine exam that they would offer to anyone who is cisgender that walked into a place, like they should offer that same service.